Self-control, teaching students about their greatest inner strength. What's the key to health, wealth, and success? You might think it's your looks, your background, or your intelligence. Think again. Self-control is our greatest human strength and the easiest to improve. Just think of your heroes, Mother Teresa, Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, and Nelson Mandela. They had different backgrounds and different skills, but they share one thing in common self-control. They overcame obstacles, they persevered in the face of failure and frustration, and they worked harder than others to achieve their goals. You might think you're worlds apart from these self-control icons, but I'm here to show you that you have that same ingredient that will help you achieve your goals. What is self-control? It has three parts. Monitoring, how much we keep track of what we're doing, how often you weigh yourself, check your bank balance, or keep track of your grades. Standards. These tell you what's appropriate. Laws tell us how fast we're supposed to drive. They tell us why we should wear a suit instead of flip-flops to a job interview. And they tell us how to live up to our moral ideals. And strength. This is the energy to use self-control. Self-control is fragile. If you use it, you have less energy left over later. Why should we study self-control? Three reasons. Self-control improves individual well-being. People with better self-control have better mental health, better physical health, they get better grades, and they're less likely to struggle with alcohol and drug abuse. To illustrate, one study wanted to see which was more important in predicting success in school, self-control or intelligence. They measured self-control and intelligence at the beginning of the year and then waited patiently to see how well the students did in their classes at the end of the year. The result? Self-control was twice as important as intelligence in predicting academic success. Self-control also improves relationships. It might even help you deal with frustration. But no one had conducted an experiment to see whether self-control helps people overcome their aggressive urges. To test this, we had college students come to a laboratory for what they thought was a taste testing study. Unbeknownst to the students, they had been randomly assigned to two different groups. The first group was given a plate that had a tasty donut on it. The experimenter said, we want to get your opinion on how the donut tastes. Next, the experimenter waited as the student was close to taking the first bite of the donut. Once the student's mouth was open, the experimenter interrupted and said, wait, I messed up, please don't eat the donut. The experimenter then left the room for six minutes. The second group was told the same thing, but this time they couldn't eat a radish instead of a donut. Imagine what those six grueling minutes were like. Forcing yourself to avoid eating a tempting donut probably took a lot of energy, much more than forcing yourself to avoid eating a radish. Next, we ignited an aggressive urge by having all participants get some insulting feedback. Did the mentally fatigued students behave most aggressively? They did. They made a stranger suffer by making them eat lots of unpleasant, spicy food. What's this energy resource that becomes depleted? One group of researchers stumbled on the solution in what they initially thought was a failed experiment. They gave some students an opportunity to indulge themselves, thinking this would undo the depletion effect. It did, but there was another surprise. Giving students a gloppy, bad-tasting beverage with lots of calories did the same thing. A large body of work now points to the importance of energy as part of the resource that's involved in willpower. Giving depleted people a boost of glucose reduces their aggression, their irrational decision-making, and their financial impulsiveness. It tells your brain that energy is coming on board and you have to allocate your energy effectively. But wait a minute. If willpower relies on a common biological process, is it necessary to have sophisticated mental machinery in order to show these depletion effects? Would animals show them? And would a boost of glucose restore them to their normal selves as it does with humans? My colleagues and I tested this possibility using dogs, two of which were my own golden retrievers. We depleted dogs by having them sit and stay for 10 minutes. Another group just sat in a kennel. Afterwards, we gave the dogs a toy that had food in it, but we rigged it so they could never get any of the food out. We timed how long they tried. Don't worry, we gave them lots of treats at the end of the study. The depleted dogs persisted about half as long as the non-depleted dogs. In a second study, we undid this effect by squirting glucose in some of the dog's mouths. So the same thing that undid self-control failure in humans worked with dogs.
Let's wrap up by talking about four things you can do to improve your self-control. As we've seen, improving your self-control has big payoffs, including better health, relationships, and success in school. You can start to see results quickly. First, become a mental energy accountant. This relates to our discussion of monitoring. You keep track of your daily activities. Do you also keep track of when you'll spend your limited mental energy? For the next two weeks, plan your activities not only according to when they'll happen, but also how much energy you'll need to do them. Second, build your self-control strength. Self-control relies on an all-purpose energy resource, so it doesn't matter how you practice it. You get stronger the more you practice. For the next two weeks, try using your non-dominant hand to complete everyday tasks like cooking and brushing your teeth. The idea is that you have to override your natural impulse to use your dominant hand, which is what self-control is all about. It seems crazy, but studies have shown that this self-control strengthening exercise pays off. Third, play offense against your environment. Take control over your surroundings. When you can't keep your eyes off your cell phone, try turning it over. You'll be surprised at how easily you'll pay attention when you don't have to worry about looking at your phone. And fourth, take the mind out of the middle. Self-control hurts because we battle against ourselves. Should I exercise now or later? Should I eat one or two slices of cake? If you want to study more, set up a contract with yourself. Whenever I get home from class, I'll do 30 minutes of studying. Sounds almost too easy, doesn't it? Today we covered one of humanity's greatest strengths, self-control. Each day we marvel at people who appear faultless when it comes to their willpower, and we ask ourselves, why don't I have more self-control? We can't make much progress at achieving our goals if we don't know about the basics of self-control, what it is, why it's important, and how it works. By resolving this mystery underlying self-control, we can gain a new appreciation for people we regard as our heroes and understand that we have what it takes to achieve our goals and lead a happy, healthy, and successful life.